hit go live. <laughs> okay. We're All live. right, let's see what happens here. We're live now. Um, I'm getting weird messages. <laughs> so, Mike, I think that what happened was what happened before is we started the show without anybody here, and we just now went live. And um, uh, Wow. Okay, I'm getting notes that... Uh, so we're going to start over. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> We just have been talking. Late. We've been talking and answering questions for how long? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. Here's the first test. Would somebody let us know if if we are on live and that you and are actually Facebook. watching us now? So uh, I, all you have to do is use a comment. So what you what the problem is is if we go live if we don't go live within ten minutes Facebook deletes it. So. Um, we're Linda says, finally. Okay. Thank you, Lin uh, Linia Pierce. Um, and then uh, now you're all saying you see us. That's great. And yes. Chris says, didn't get my message. No, we didn't get Chris's message <laughs> either. We didn't get anything, but we've been on for 10 minutes having a wonderful program. It was fabulous. I'm so sorry everybody missed it. So the, the trick was... We could come back to all the questions here in a minute. We'll, yeah. we'll kind of... Kind so, of come back. so what we're going to, what they're suggesting that we do is remove the destination from the bot broadcast and then re-add it. So I'm going to do that. Um, okay. And well, for Facebook, you're talking about? Yes, for Facebook. Okay. And well, then, I'm going to, I'll just keep, stay here with everybody and yeah. say hello. Well, what we can <laughs> do right. is go ahead and uh, we'll, I guess we'll start over. You can give a little intro of what you said in the very beginning. All right. Well, thanks, Phyllis. I'm glad I brought you back on. We probably would have done the whole show. And I just looked up and it said, start broadcast. I said, I already did start it. Well, folks, I don't know. Uh, things get weird. So we are up. And I think it's mostly YouTubers that are watching us now. Um, I don't know if anybody is watching us on Facebook. Uh, that's good. Chris says we missed the big reveal. We didn't really have a big reveal, did we? <laughs> oh yeah, we're not going to do that again. No, we didn't have a big reveal. Uh, and uh, and uh, Deborah says so. I'm ten minutes late. And I missed nothing. No, nope, we didn't miss anything. <laughs> well, we are live and broadcasting. You, you, missed, you missed what happened to our air conditioning unit that we took out. We have no idea. Oh, and okay. So let me just kind of really go real quick here, uh, and we'll we'll pick up all these questions uh, that we that we talked about. Uh, the first thing is we we made a, a note that we um, are hitting the road this week. We we are off to a couple of places, and one of the stories is kind of like a little news story that we picked up. If you remember earlier in the spring, we did a story about this emerging trend because you know some of the campgrounds are so crowded. You're always competing, and if you unless you make your reservations far in advance, you, it's hard. And that a lot of our viewers were now seeking out places that they could buy their own land and and make their, you know, have a place for their RV. They'd probably still camp around, but they had their own base. And then they could rent out that spot. And they could too. rent it out if they wanted to. We visited one place that had just started uh, in Tennessee. Well, we we've since have learned that that same company. Uh, that had, I think it was called the landings, it's now bought a big 1,500 acre uh, hunk of land on a mountaintop in middle Tennessee and are developing that for RV use, for RVs uh, for in sizes of five acres or up to even over 100 acres. So we're going to swing by on our way down to the Mississippi River. We have a gathering there with our supporters next weekend or next Monday, a week from tomorrow. And uh, we're going to check that out. So I'm really excited about that. Some of those parcels, they start at five acres and you can go up to over a hundred acres and it's really cool land. And they have fiber optic cable. You can actually build permanent residence if you want, or you can make it all RVs. You could buy a whole state park there, start your own state park, I guess. But So we're going to check that out. And then we're down to uh, the river, uh, Mississippi River for our, our gathering. And we were talking about how we're going to be able to use our new air conditioner. If you don't know what we're talking about, it's the video that went up yesterday on our RV Lifestyle channel on YouTube. We put in that super new quiet. In fact, it's called the quiet RV air conditioner and quiet it is. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of a synopsis of all the stuff we said when there was nobody watching us. <laughs> and let's start with the questions. Now, Linda Ward had the first question. We already answered this, Linda. 
<laughs> but we'll answer it again. Okay, so Linda wanted to know if there was a button that you shouldn't push in the RV. Well, I like what Ed Richards said. He said, don't push the emergency re eject button. And Linda said, I bought one of those. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was. But uh, I I don't know of one. And you know any buttons that she shouldn't push? I said the knob to turn off your hot water. There's a ridge on it. Ours black button, little black ridge. And uh, I took it too far. Oh, you I, went I'm, into winter clean -up. Yeah, yeah. I, I really messed it up. So well, I didn't mess it up. Well, it just it was, couldn't use, couldn't it, for, use it for uh, how many hour, hours? <laughs> half hour or so. But uh, I want to put white marker on this little ridge so it's very easy to see because it's up high and you're looking up. And it's a little round thing and it's not very clear. It's the Truma thing. And one is there's different modes, eco mode, constant mode, I don't know, a bunch of modes. And the one we do, which is just on demand mode, uh, that's the one we always use. But you turn it off by turning it up instead of down. And it, it's just, they should, so we're just going to, we would say, be careful about that. Know what you're going to do. And Jennifer's going to take some white out and put it on that knob eventually, yeah. someday. <laughs> Before yeah, we sell it. <laughs> that's about the only one I know of. Yeah, that's the only thing that we've had problems with. And don't go like this. You know, always look before you go like that, you know. Uh, fire weed spirit. Well, this is the question that I was curious about, too, what we did with our old air conditioner, but we had the new one put in. I just left it there uh, at Advanced RV. I mean, hmm. I don't intend to use it again, and I don't know if I don't know whether they can resell those things um, because it you know, the warranty wouldn't have a warranty on it. So I don't think there's a I'm big sure market. A handy person would well, be able to uh, okay. use it. So call but, Advanced um, RV. But, you know, I wasn't going to carry it around in the in the RV. Big. Yeah, it's very big. And I got a new RV, a new air conditioner. And I'm not going to go back to the old one. And so I just left it there. And I don't know what they do with it, whether they throw them away or maybe they got this this side business of selling these used air conditioners. But well, I, I would it. hope that it would be used again. Yeah. Call them up if you want it. Uh, maybe they still have it. Dennis Leonard. Did you run into, into any or were you aware of any hiccups Harvest Host had when integrating the Boondockers welcome site to their own? They did that this week. And uh, I went and I looked and I didn't see any issues. I didn't try and reserve anything because we weren't going anywhere this past week. But uh, we do plan to use it in the next couple of weeks. So I hope there's no issues. I've not heard of any. I uh, usually people always send me notes. Oh, this isn't working. This isn't working. So um, I, I don't know of any that uh, would be causing that. Inca Schultz. I assume with the addition of the new AC, you're going to keep the wonder. And what I said is don't assume anything with us. <laughs> uh, yeah, we love, it, love the wonder. <clears throat> we wouldn't have installed it if we were going to get rid of it anytime soon. Uh, you know, this new air conditioner, it was a pretty expensive air conditioner. So uh, we, we still have it. And uh, we have, uh, you know, I mean, we're always looking. Normally, we, we trade out about every two years. So we're getting close to that time. But a couple of things are different now. I mean, one, we're very happy with what we have. We've put a lot of upgrades in that. And two, uh, if we were to order something new to be built, it's going to take forever to be built. And uh, three, we haven't seen anything else that we really like better. So, so, but we're always looking. Right? And what I said is that I think, you know, when we sell our wonder, it should be worth a little bit more that. Oh yeah. We shouldn't have any trouble selling it because it's got all that new stuff on it, mm -hmm. but, but, but we're keeping it for now. <laughs> I don't know. And who knows forever, maybe Tim Taylor. Do you feel comfortable that your water lines won't freeze in your wonder twin bed when winter camping? Um, yeah, because there's nothing in the water, in the water lines to freeze. You know, when you winterize an RV, you, and, and we winterize it when the temperature gets consistently below 28 degrees for numerous hours. You know, if you're camping and it suddenly dips to 30 degrees or something overnight, and then the temperature in the days in the fifties, you, you know, it's not an emergency. You don't have to winterize then. If you're running heat in the air and you're in the RV, you're not going to freeze up, but um, if the groundwater is freezing, it's over, say, 28 for five, six hours, yes, you do want it winterized. And by winterizing, what you do, for those of you who don't know, you basically get all the water out of the plumbing system. You drain your fresh water tank. It's empty. You don't have to do anything to it. You, there's nothing in it. 
and um, your plumbing lines, you when you drain all the water out of the freshwater tank and you blow air through those lines, get it all out. And then you run antifreeze through the plumbing system, not into the freshwater tank, just through the plumbing, the pipes. Nothing's going to freeze. Any condensation it's not going to freeze. And then, of course, in your black tank, you've emptied that. You don't have anything in there. Uh, you might have a little bit of antifreeze because you're when you flush the toilet because you want antifreeze through that system. And that's it. There's nothing to freeze. And your water, that filter that you have to take out. Oh, yeah. You take the water filter out. Yeah. So it's um, there's nothing to freeze. Now, we use our all year round. In fact, just this week, I made reservations for us for our annual camp out in the snow at Taquamanan Falls. And in I the sure Upper hope Peninsula. they have snow there. They usually have two and a half feet of snow, and, and we're going like the first full weekend of January. And then from there, we drive down to the Tampa RV show. So that's why we had to do it early. And we're going to go. We're not going to make a big deal out of it. If uh, people show up, they show up. And if they don't, it's it's quieter for you and me and Bo. Uh, <laughs> but we love winter camping. And we're planning right now. We're going down south for a few weeks, but we're planning to camp in November in Michigan. And I think one of the stories we lined up that I want to do is up to the UP in November, they usually get their first snow up there then. Everything kind of shuts down. And I think that'd be just a fun little story to get the beginning of winter and the first snow. So. Now we have always had Norwegian elk hounds as our pets and Bo is our fourth Norwegian elk hound. But the last guy, it was one of those winters when we didn't get snow and we put him in the RV and we drove up to find snow. And when we found snow, I have never seen a happier dog. He was just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> no. Our dogs it's love worth snow. having a, a dog that likes snow. If you can find him some snow. I think we told everybody about Bo in one of our videos. Oh, it was one of our mooch docking videos a couple of weeks ago where Bo kept rolling in poop or before we left. He had a bath yesterday and uh, we were out at, uh, late afternoon today and he found some poop and he rolled in poop the day after his bath. So, so Bo is not so, welcome. Um, he's not, he hasn't come in here yet today, but he's not. Yeah, he's he, mad at you for washing. Yeah. Him. He's mad at me. I had to wash him again. So uh, BB with a question. All right. Uh, does uh, food or grease ever get splashed on the seat next to your stove? Does putting down the uh, fold up counter help? Well, putting down the fold up, can't, uh, can't speak, counter, <laughs> certainly counter. would help. And uh, I have not had that problem with it splashing. I use two burners. I use the one closest to the sink rather than the outer one as much as possible. I use a lot of lids and uh, yeah, you don't want that splash. Oh, and most of the time, because we have bow, I have a towel on that seat anyway, because in case bow jumps up there, I don't want him jumping, getting the seat dirty. Yeah, but, we've but never um, had... we haven't. And it's far enough away from that seat, the burners, because I remember when I we did that cooking thing and I poured <laughs> that pot. That's the only time anything spilled. Yeah, it got on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it that's, another, that's another and that's video, another and I'm video. not going to direct people to that one. But no, that's that where we did a cooking, cooking video. But we give you real cooking videos. We give you the raw video video where. Mike pours stuff too fast. and I think I was pouring. Oh, you were just humoring me, I think. It was uh, my fault more than yours. No, it wasn't. I didn't want to walk up and get the proper ladle to transfer uh, the... I, 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 I thought it was 50-50. Bob Leach. Uh, okay, what's the info brand link for the new AC unit? Just go to rvlifestyle.com, Bob. It's a, it's a big story that was up. You'll find it right there. Uh, and then it's got links built in, and I don't have to tell you but it's uh, it's called the quiet rv air conditioner and it's uh, from a company named houghton and uh, they don't really install it themselves uh the place where we had ours installed was advanced rv in willoughby ohio go to rvlifestyle.com and you'll find the story with the video and any every question you have answered and i gotta say when it's running it is so quiet you can't believe it but there still is compressor noise yeah people are gonna say oh, i can hear it well yes you can hear it there's always compressor noise we never heard so, the compressor noise before you can go watch our video and you'll you can see because it's it's really clear that we can actually talk and have a conversation and work with that air conditioner on and it's very efficient too it's 20 percent more efficient according to the tests they run with other air conditioners so we're happy phil armbruster 
Do you think it's better to do annual maintenance at the end of the season or beginning of the season prior to taking it out for the first time in the spring? Both, both. You know, your annual, you just want to have it all cleaned up, everything fixed, make sure your propane regulator works, all that stuff. Uh, and just, um, just, just uh, you know, put it away, winterize it well if you're not using it. We use ours every month, every week we're using ours. So uh, I, I, have, I just do anti-annual maintenance when I reach a certain miles. I just had an oil change in mine this week. And um, the, tomorrow I'm taking it in for, I have a valve stem leak, very slight leak. Second one I've had on this unit, a valve stem leak. And so I've got to, I want to go get that fixed. Is it, no, Tuesday I'm doing that. And then Wednesday we take off. So, uh, so I, we do maintenance all the time, uh, you know, on an ongoing ba basis. So I would, but certainly if you put it away at the start of the season. Okay. I saw the video when you installed the equalizer levelers. How have these worked out for you? Any issues? Uh, I don't know if they're issues. Uh, the first we were the very first transit that equalizer put the leveling system on and there was not a lot of ground clearance, particularly in the front. And so they brought us back. It worked fine. We never had any problems. We even, uh, we did bottom out once on a boondocking trip up right. at Pigeon river, mm -hmm. Pigeon river state forest, but they brought us back and they said, we found a little better area to mount them. So they remounted them on a different area. I did have one leveler that kind of uh, would would drift down a little bit when it was parked and I'd have to hit the button to retract it up. There was kind of like a hydraulic leak, I guess, or something, a pressure issue, and they fixed that. And then the big issue was operator error was last spring, I, we were camping somewhere that had a had big logs about that big that lined the place where you back into the camping spot pull through pull through and i was going to go out you and were around. On a mission. i was on a mission that was going to actually go i over was the walking dump. Bow. you were walking bow and i didn't see the logs on one side and i turned and went up and over so it. cut right now before you take off walk all the way yes. around your unit yes. not only what you forgot what yes. you forgot to close covers or whatever Walk around that space and see what you got. Yeah, because from the driver's seat, I couldn't really see couldn't that. See it was that. right next to me. Anyway, I ran over that thing and it caught one of the levelers and basically ripped it off. And, and then, then it pulled the other he one. Was so saying to me, "What do I do? What do I do?" And I was just standing like, "I don't know what you do." Yeah, right back <laughs> up. I go forward. Yeah. But it was it was a mess, and so we con had a uh, mobile tech come out and. We uh, took the two of them off. He got them off. And then we had a, because there was no hydraulic pressure in them, the other ones could have dropped down. So we wired those up so they wouldn't drop. And I took it back to the equalizer and they they put new ones on and fixed them. And uh, so that's been my experience with, with the levelers. Are we glad we have them? Yes. Yes. So it's always good to listen to us because, you know, don't make do mistakes, Don't make the same mistake. Don't do what we yeah. We go out and make these do. mistakes intentionally so we can explain it. But yeah, so we can spare you some grief. So, uh, yeah, you know, um, the biggest issue was th they weren't quite sure where to place them on the transit. And I think they have figured that out. I know they've done others since ours. And uh, so I, I think. I mean, we were the yeah. first people. So we yeah. expected to have to go back as they figure things out. That's a long answer, LK. I hope it helped. <laughs> so don't be afraid to get them. Uh, Jerry Cornelius. Do you have a seven day guide for the Natchez Trace? No, I think we need to do that as our next book because uh, I do have a three part video series on the Natchez Trace. The way to do the Natchez Trace, we're going to do it the other way uh, next week, this time. but is to start in Natchez and go up to Nashville. This time we're going to be actually going from going Middle south. Tennessee uh, down to Natchez. But uh, short of our book, which we will probably do, maybe we'll do that over the winter. Uh, the uh, National Park Service has a great uh, fold-up map. Remember those old triptychs that, you know? Great map. And it Very. lists list by mile marker on mm -hmm. the trace everything to see. So, uh, but we will we will do and we'll incorporate some of the campgrounds that we visited and some of the things to see in the surrounding towns. But meantime, 
over at RV Lifestyle, our uh, RV Lifestyle uh, channel, we uh, we have um, a three part series that you can find. Hey, and while we're there, can we talk about uh, our RV Lifestyle channel just a little bit? I'm asking you, you guys who watch us uh, regularly, if you have not subscribed yet, would you do us a favor and please subscribe? It's important to us because the more people who subscribe, the more Google will then show our videos. So if you like our videos, want us to do more, um, help please us. Please subscribe say, and then thumbs up. Thumbs up and hit the bell icon. And when you hit that, then you get notified. We have new, okay. new videos. Now back to work. Back to work. So, But please do that if you will. All right. Uh, James Messy. When will you replace your RV tires? What I tried find? to do it this week, James. I, uh, I'm i not real happy with the ride on these. I forget the brand name. It's not Continental, but it's a, I don't know what brand. I'm just not real happy with the ride. I'm a real firm fan of Michelin tires. And I wanted to replace our six tires this is how much we like our wonder. Obviously, that's a big expense. I wanted to replace them this week with uh, with Michelin's, and uh, you can't get any. the 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 tire shop I deal with, it's a pretty big shop, has uh, four major suppliers that it works with. It, there's none to be had. They told me none to be had. So um, take care of your tires because this parts shortage, the supply chain breakdown is also affecting uh, tires. It's affecting everything. Everything is affecting. And also you were told that our tires are fine. Yeah, they looked them over and they say, your tires are fine. I said, well, I just, you know, and they said, well, you know, don't worry about so, it. I, have a problem. I mean, I've only I, got about 20,000 plus miles. The on problem them, so. really is the roads. Oh, the roads are horrible. I mean, in, in a lot of states, it's not just Michigan. As we drive around, there are a lot of roads out there that. But these tires, I'm just, like I said, I've had, I had a one valve stem leak on the passenger side rear last year, last spring. And now I've got one on the driver's side leak. I always worry about that you whack the tire. I didn't whack. Oh, see, I should have said <laughs> that. No, I didn't whack the tire okay. here. I don't know. That's what I always think. I didn't. Karen Matteris. <laughs> oh, I'm so jealous. Just came back from Mackinac Island and spent a day traveling to the UP and stopped at Tequamenum Falls. Man, I'm double jealous. Thank you for the travel ideas. That was our first trip in our new fifth wheel. You just said you could not have timed it better. I hope you had good weather and clear skies, but the colors should have been spectacular, Karen. Uh, we absolutely love the UP and uh, uh, like I say, we're going up in, in November. As soon as we get back from this Mississippi trip, we're going to go up and see if we can hang around and get the first snowstorm <laughs> of the season. Since we missed the leaves. Since we missed the leaves, we'll go for the first snowstorm. Yeah, I got to go for something. Constance Hanby Hapakangas. I don't know if I got that right, but let we me try that. Hapakangas. Got it. We stopped looking for an RV when the gas prices soared. How do you afford the gas? Well, if you can't afford the gas, you can't afford the RV, Karen or Constance. That's that's the gas prices. Are, I filled up your car today. Well, my car. Yeah, it, it, but I mean, premium is like almost four dollars a gallon now. And diesel it's only get diesel is about three eighty a gallon. Uh, regular is three fifty in most places, and it, this is all in just a few months. It's just it, it's just going to get higher. It's just begun. Um, it's a big factor. And, you know, it's a big factor. Fuel costs are a, a ton of it. So that's what you should tell me. They say, well, if you're, if you're worried about gas prices, you really shouldn't buy the RV. And I, I used to get angry at that. And I still kind of do. So, so well, uh, just like COVID, the big camping in your yard, camping in your driveway. Or that's another reason why I think these buy your own lots and go there and you enjoy it. And you can, you can do whatever, you know, find an area that you like. And, and a lot of people are doing that, but you know, hopefully the gas prices will go down again. Uh, they do usually. <laughs> I don't know if they will in the next, with this, I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying anything more, but they're high. They are high and they're going to go higher. Johnny Henderson. While watching a new AC video, <laughs> I had to turn off my AC. Maybe I need the new quiet AC. <laughs> That's about the truth of it, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we, we didn't, we always were saying, we don't watch much TV in our RV. Well, you know. <laughs> Maybe That's because you reason. usually need the air conditioner on if you're camping in warm weather. And you can't turn up the TV loud enough to get over the sound of the air conditioner. Um, yeah. Guess, you there's, know, there's headsets. You have to get some headsets. Yeah, headsets and for the thing. Um, yeah. You know, the uh, the whole thing with uh, the quiet air conditioner is we, 
it, it's it's not for everybody. I mean, it's a lot of money. It's by the time you install it and all that stuff, it's pushing thirty five hundred dollars. So you have to use your RV a lot and be very uh, frustrated with it. For us, a big factor is that we when we're out working, we shoot video all day long and then we come back at night and we edit it and we often have to narrate stuff or just listen to what we've recorded. Even with earphones, sometimes it's hard and it's just so noisy with that uh, AC. And if we're doing a lot of track or narration as we call it, or narration or track as we call it, uh, we'll have to turn off the air conditioner and then it gets so hot. And, it's, and I'm such a whiner when I'm too hot. Yeah, so, oh no, I'm, I gotta, I gotta be very careful how I say. <laughs> so uh, it's just really nice for us. and. You can also have a conversation. It lets you sleep easier. That was our choice. We are not saying you have to, anybody else should do this. And people always say, well, it costs too much money. And yeah. it does. You have to make the value proposition. Is it worth it to you? What we're trying to say is if your air conditioner dies, goes out for some reason, consider Consider this. that. Or if you're like us, you know, and uh, you had it, <laughs> you really, you know, you want, you use your, then, and you can afford it, then, then go get it. And by the way, we paid for ours. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a gift or anything we got for advertising or anything like that. Uh, Stephen Loy, I'm a week or, or into a two week trip from Savannah up to the Adirondacks, into Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and now Connecticut. What a great trip! Mm -hmm. you're, you're going to the color, so you should have a great time. We love the Adirondacks. We wrote a book on the Adirondacks, and. Um, you know, you can't go wrong. So you just enjoy your travels, Stephen. Thank you for checking a in with two us. two-week trip. That sounds so nice. Johnny Lococo. Leaving to go to Arizona in January, pulling a 44-foot fifth wheel. Wow. Wondering if you recommend taking it further south before freezing temperatures and icy roads. We were thinking of leaving the RV in Oklahoma. Um, I don't know. Oklahoma gets pretty cold, Johnny. So I don't know. And I don't know where, where you are, from. where you say you're leaving from, because, you know, taking it further south from where from Oklahoma. Yes. If, if you're going to leave it in the winter and you don't want to don't and, and you're going to go in January. Frankly, I mean, you got a bigger unit and it takes a little bit more of everything to winterize a 44 foot fifth wheel. But um uh, you know, we'll we'll winterize in November for our travels, and then I will dewinterize as soon as we get done with the winter camp out in January. So it's only for a few weeks. It's not that hard to dewinterize. It's not that hard to winterize. Uh, it, when you read the instructions on anything, haven't you all noticed this? It just oh my gosh, all these steps. But when you actually do it, it's 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 much easier, and so it is with winterizing. Uh, but the first couple of times, it can be a little intimidating. Just follow the instructions in the manual that came with your RV. In Johnny's case, I think he should go someplace warmer if, he's, if, if he doesn't want to winterize. I think it's going to be harder in 44 feet because I'm thinking the bathroom and the kitchen. Yeah, the yeah. You've got and everything. Winterizing is a bigger deal, for something that big. So Yeah, and some people even have a bath and a half in their rigs. Yeah, well, I bet he's got two baths and a fireplace and a bunk bed and... <laughs> 14 TVs and a washer dryer. That's a that's a neat unit. I'd love to see your unit. Troy Brackett. Love your channel. Thank you very much for loving our channel. We have a 36-foot preset, but are seriously wondering about an LTV rear lounge. Given all the models you've had, how would you rate your current wonder oh, about wow. the leisure travel van? Yeah. So rear how do you lounge. like how would you rate the wonder? I like the wonder. Now, if you want to tow, I think the other one is just ours with the garage. You can't tow. I, I think our favorite one is the FX. And I mean, that's our leading choice. If we were to replace the Wonder, we would see if we could get another FX, a newer FX. We're waiting for a couple more, you know, and then we'd add a couple more features on them. You know, I know, I know now that I want at least a 3,000 watt inverter. And uh, 400 watts is okay of solar. 600 is a little better. Um, you know, there's a few things that we would, we would change. One of the things we like about the, the, the unity, uh, is that it has ducted air conditioner, which is much quieter mm -hmm. because it's ducted. It's very efficient to the front and the back it has a, that little slide. And out, that which is gives you so very much... efficient front and back. Cause when you have the ceiling mount, it's cool where you are, but yeah. it doesn't go to the front yep. the um, way that you would might like it. Yep. Uh, 
But I think so. I think I think that's kind of our favorite. The 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 FX the the Unity FX. Now, in terms of how we rate our wonder, uh, you know, obviously we're keeping it, so we like it. We we like the storage. You know, we like the um, comfortable mattresses. I like not having to make up a bed when we stop for the that's night. That's a big thing for us. And we were hoping because when we uh, had that one for two weeks before we got our FX, we tried one for two weeks. We, yeah, mm -hmm. Bo was very happy sitting back there looking out the window. But I think the roads must have been better. They were. Any place, wherever we yeah. were, because now he's terrified of every bump in the road. Well, he's terrified because we drove that one stretch of I-69. He was lying back there looking out the window. And the, and the shade, shade fell off. And the one of the shade fell out of its, it pulled right out of the wood, the screws and everything. It was such a bump. It dropped on the bed. Elkhounds never forget. Yeah. So. Elkhound before him got stung by a bee and the rest of its life it was afraid of all insects. Yeah. So, so Bo, it, 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 traveling with Bo is a, is a hassle. I, I will just tell you that flat <laughs> out. And in the uh, Wonder, which has a smaller cab, cabin, uh, there's not as much room for him to lay down. He's, he tries to get between us, but there's no room. So he stands up the entire time and it's very hard on him. Yeah, it's and not he gets good all for him. stressed and yeah, we've so, got some little pills. We're gonna give him comfort pills. We're gonna drug Bo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doggy dope. <laughs> so, Leslie Harding. Uh, where do you stay when you visit Teddy Roosevelt National Park? In the campground at uh, what's the name of that park? Uh, Cottonwood. I think it's Cottonwood Campground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, favorite one of our favorite campgrounds. And I don't one know about our, these days, but uh, we would have always been. Lucky in the past to be able to get in. Oh yeah, we it, it's you know uh, we love that campground. Bison come right through. It's a good little hike right there on the lower Mississippi, lower Missouri River, right off the campground. Um, we have, that's one of my favorite national parks. Yeah, you love that park, and I we do. we didn't have Bo with us. A yes, a couple of times when we were there, so you know we didn't have to worry about the animals and Bo. So, so should we adopt Bo? We, should, we need to have him adopted out. I don't know. We need a nanny. Oh, you want a new mommy and daddy? No. No, we can't. Yeah, but but it, that is a great park. So the Cottonwood Campgrounds where we stay there, Leslie. It's a great place. Troy Brackett again. We had similar considerations with our bathroom fans. The stock models were noisy and didn't move enough air when we... Uh, uh, boondocked so we switched them to max air models yeah those are very good those are really good fans max air and it's not a hard switch for those yeah that i don't know if i like, could do it but most that, people probably could but not me yeah i mean that's, I'd that's a really good it. idea because yeah. they are noisy max air is great great fan thanks troy yeah jennifer wood loved your video series on the natchez trace so much my husband and i are now taking a week to do the trace in december i hope you'll do a book uh, we'd love to add it to our to Mike and Jen's collection. Oh, thank you. Uh, we well, Jennifer, so I wish you were going fun. next week. We'd meet you down there because we we were not sure how we were going to get to Natchez this time. And the reason we have, everybody wonders what we're doing. You know, we have a group of supporters on Facebook and members on YouTube, and we do a camp out for just them. And uh, this one sold out like in a day. And so we keep our group gatherings to about 50 people, which is about 25, 30 rigs. And when we were down there before, we felt we stayed at a campground right on the river, the Riverview Campground. We love this place. It's and in Louisiana. So we said, we got to have, it's right across the river in Louisiana, in Vidalia, Louisiana. So that's why we're going back there. Uh, October is a great month. And uh, we, we're that, that's where we'll be next week. So, And in fact, if you're thinking next year, right before we come, the weekend before. This they, weekend. Yeah, next weekend. Next they weekend. have hot, a hot air balloon. Kind of like Albuquerque, which just yeah, did there. Yeah, you don't have to drive week. across the country. Yeah. So you might want to check into some of the things. And if you're a Civil War person, they have a reenactment I saw in the brochure about the Civil War. If, you know. Yeah, but it's, it's great. we'll do a couple videos on Natchez and we'll have a lot, I'm sure, from it. But it's a great area and we get to go eat the best, the world's best fried chicken once again. So, but thank you, Jennifer, for those kind words. And we, we, uh, we will do it. We'll, do, we'll get one out by spring. We'll try. And have you seen the new Jayco Terrain Class B? It's quite nice. Didn't so see it in person. Price. It is. It's, uh, yeah, it is. It's fairly reasonable. Um, you know, Jayco's a big brand, big company, you know, um, 
So I haven't I haven't had a chance to actually go inside one and, and look at it, but I saw it and I just see Winnebago came out with a brand new little we'll be talking about that in the podcast, a little a new little travel trailer. How nice. A little tiny travel trailer, about the size of a pickup truck. I think everybody it's tall, tall, everybody but, wants something smaller. But not everybody. Well, I don't. most people. <laughs> this is for two people. It's not yeah. for a family or anything. Yeah. Like that. You got um, kids. Class B's, bigger. everybody's in the class B's. That's where all the money is, the whole van life crowd and they run from under a hundred as that Jayco up to 350,000. So, uh, and class B's are more expensive than class A's because um, there's so much custom work that goes into them because they have to fit that confined space in the box itself that the, you know, that comes with the van. Uh, but it's a neat, it's a neat to welcome to the club. I'd love seeing more class B's. So how long do you think that class A was that we saw today turning that corner? It was huge. Oh my, that was probably 38 feet, 40 I know. feet. Just I don't know. Huge. Yeah. I don't know how they can afford talk about gas, which yeah. we talked about. I don't know how they could afford gas at that price. It's just it's crazy. Um, Johnny Lococo. I wasn't worried about winterizing. I was worried about icy roads leaving Michigan to drive to Arizona. Just wondering if I should take RV more south before winter and then uh Pull from there instead. Um, if it's an icy okay. weather, pull over and wait for it to thaw. You know, wait. I don't think. So. Yeah, that's that's the thing, Johnny. The roads are in great shape. We've driven I seventy five south. Uh, we've driven uh, what's the route to eighty ninety west. Um, but it, it, they uh, in January many many times, and we've never had a problem. We've gotten we've one time we got ice on I sixty five, and we just took our time, and then. Uh, you pull over a few hours later, it's gone, it's melted. You know, you might get an occasional storm, but uh, January, I, I would not worry about that uh, if you're leaving. You do, if you're going to stay in Michigan until January, you need to winterize that. that Definitely you winterize. Really do. And if you are worried about it, it sounds like you are. Move it south. Move it south because, you know, January, I mean, it we freezes do get the ice storms. Down into Alabama, northern. But yeah. Uh, you know, when you get into northern Florida, it's very rare in January that it will f be below freezing for any more than just a couple hours. So uh, you could do it that way and take off along I-10, take I-10 all the way west and you'd be great. But um, you, but you, really, but you want to winterize it. You can't leave it unwinterized in Michigan during December and into January. You never know what you're going to get. Thomas Taylor. I am now following the RV podcast. Looking forward to listening to the episodes. Thank Thanks. you, Thomas. Well, thank uh, great. you for, for following us. Every Wednesday, a new episode is out there. What time is it anyway? It's uh, 10 to 10 to. OK, we got a, a little bit yet to go. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so sorry for those of you who wonder where we were at the top because we had that glitch. and We, we were sitting here talking yeah, we were, and we answering like questions. Great old time yeah. talking. Yeah. So. Uh, should tell everybody about our group map. Uh, we always like to talk about that. That's free. It doesn't cost you anything. You can find a link to it from rvlifestyle.com at slash map and uh, join it and then add your favorite places along the way that you've stayed, campgrounds, uh, attractions, good road food, places to boondock. Uh, yeah, we've got hundreds of spots on there now. Uh, I think we have a couple thousand members who've signed up for the map and we invite you to do it. It's just great for your RV trip planning. Uh, you can, you can use it with your app. You can look at a state, see what's nearby, check it out. Uh, RV lifestyle map. And we always ask, you know, where do we get this? What are we doing with that stuff? So we have a gear page where most of the major things that we use ourselves that we, uh, we put up and you can find that at RV lifestyle.com slash gear. And hadn't we decided that next Sunday? Oh, yeah. I think I think next Sunday, because I don't know if I'm going to actually be in an area where we'll have much internet with our plans. We're not going to do and ask us anything next Sunday. Um, I know I'm going to regret it. <laughs> if I have an internet signal, I'm going to say, oh, man, we could have done it. But um, rather than, uh, than get everybody there and not show up, I think it's better just to say no, ask us anything next week. We will be back in two weeks, but not next week. So uh, remember that if you can, and we'll try and post that on all of our social media stuff. So, so you know it there, but uh, uh, no, one ask us anything next week. That's but the not, podcast is still going to be there. The podcast, everything else is there. Yep. Yep. And it's all there. 
Uh, and we got some new, well, I, I guess this is kind of a good time to tell them about our new, uh, the new look we're going to do with the website. We, we're very close to going live with the brand new design on the website, which will make things, make it really easy to find the stories you want. Uh, it just looks really cool. It's a whole big uh, remodel upgrade. It's more than that. I mean, it's a brand new site. And um, it's being programmed now, and with it will come a little new logo and some new merch. And you can actually, if you want to see it, you can. There's a sneak preview. I've got some ordered for us, and I haven't gotten it yet. I was going to wear them tonight, but hopefully we'll get them to wear them to show our supporters when we get down to Natchez. But uh, some new, a new design, um, and you can see that right there at rvlifestyle.com/go shopping for our, all that stuff. And uh, if you have questions, you can reach Jen and me right there. There's our address, Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. We love getting your questions. We love being able to answer the, the things that, that are on your mind or hear your comments and stuff. Uh, one of the things we keep asking, we love getting them for our podcast. We do answer questions on the podcast. And if you would just uh, record a selfie, send that in to us at that address make a little video, ask the questions, and we'll, we'll share those on the podcast as well. And uh, that's about all I got. All I, right. All right. I think we are about done with questions. No? Travel one. It's me again. Not a camper. <laughs> Excuse me, not a camper. Do, do we use a Jackery? No. We don't use any of that like that. I'm a homeowner uh, for backup power for Seafone, laptop. You are my uh, couple of role models. Um, you know, it's not a bad idea to have that for, um, <coughs> excuse me. I had a cough earlier. I know, I now I'm yeah. catching it. Um, it's not a bad idea to have one of those. It's a little power supply. There's a whole bunch of different models out there that are basically batteries. And you can, if you lose power or a storm comes through, you can charge everything. And uh, it's, it's, it's nice to have. Uh, we have our RV, so if we have we lose power, we'll go out to the RV. We have a generator in the RV. Uh, I do have um, big battery backup power supplies for our computers and our electronic gear. But uh, uh, basically, uh, we have a whole house generator on our sticks and bricks home. But um, you know, we have all that stuff in the RV. That is a nice little thing. The Jackery is just one of a number of different models that will let you have some backup power to charge your devices. Yeah, I think in this day and age, you need that. Yeah. You need a backup system. Johnny Lightning. Mike, I know you're a ham radio operator. What's your feeling on having a CB in your rig? You know, I would, uh, the problem is an antenna. And if I guess, if I'm going to put an antenna on my RV, it's going to be a ham antenna <laughs> rather than a CB. However, that said, the ham radio is not very good for finding out traffic conditions or road conditions. The CB is, um, we've not had one. I've talked about it. I've considered it. I had one CB shop try to install it and they didn't seem to know much of what they were doing. And, uh, we pulled away from that one, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I would like having one just when I get in a traffic jam to know what's ahead. But normally with, apps like Waze, uh, I know anyway, and I'm, I'm alerted long beforehand. So uh, I don't feel any compulsion to have CB. I do have, you know, ham radio. Uh, this is my ham gear right here. It's, it's the trailer. You can't see it's kind of dark, but um, this is all of our ham gear. This is the, my shack, as ham radio operators call it. But um, uh, I have it in the car, and I have uh, digital and I'm able to communicate worldwide with that. Um, but it's a lot of noise. Jennifer doesn't particularly appreciate it. So unless she's in the back sleeping, I don't really turn it on. <laughs> Bo much. doesn't care. Yeah, Bo doesn't care. He, if you're in the back sleeping, Bo likes it because he steals your seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it. All right. Hey, we are, again, remember, no uh, ask us anything next week. We will be on the road, and it's just going to be awkward to get out. We won't have, be able to do it, but we will be back in two weeks. Uh, meantime, the podcast and videos, all that stuff goes as normal. Phyllis Kerr comes back on. Yeah, give us a thumbs up on this video. And subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Do all the things. Um, it was great. And we did good. We finally got Facebook in there. We didn't get the group in, but we did get the page in. So uh, technology. Yeah. Is always Normally we simulcast on a group, our supporters group, 
our main group and the page and uh, but we missed it this it's time. Okay. So it's that's okay. all right. And YouTube, you YouTubers, thank you all for being there. All right, Phyllis, we'll see you in uh, Natchez, Mississippi. That's right. All right. Phyllis is staying in a, in a cabin there, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that will be fun. All right. So I want to thank you guys so much for being with us. Uh, it, it, sorry about the mix up when we started. Thank you, Chris Cowley over on YouTube for keeping everybody going. And uh, I can't wait to hit the road. How about you? I'm anxious. Yeah. So happy trails. Mm -hmm.